Um, buenas tardes a todos. <laughs> but it's everything what I can actually speak in uh, Spanish. Uh, so I will turn to English right now. Um, our presentation of today has three objectives. The first of all, of, um, I would like to introduce you what is networking. The second is, I would like to explain you why is networking that important. And the third thing is how to get a good networker. So before I will start with the first part, I would like to go and to introduce myself. I'm Anastasia and my partner, Martin Lundong. It's just to the right of me. So um, two years ago, me and Martin just found Finance Club um, in Shanghai. Uh, which is a group of finance professionals uh, all over the world with about 150,000 of members now. So what we do is we try to help our finance professionals to boost their careers, to, deal, uh, to find their deals, and to exchange their financial knowledge. What, how they can do this is on two ways. First thing, they can do it online, so they join the finance lab and they go to discussion boards and they try to exchange their knowledge and thoughts over there. Or the second part is that the finance lab um, organize some uh, networking events in New York City and London so that the people can get to know on the face-to-face -face basis and they can use this context at the same point or at some point in the future. So now I will turn to the uh, first question, what is networking? We ask our finance professionals at the events what they understand under networking, and we saw that there were really different impressions what the people has. They told us that networking is some kind of to exchange the business card and to keep in touch with these people afterwards, to exchange the inter, um, context, direct and indirect context in the future, and many other things. You can read them here. Our definition of networking is that um, networking is building and strengthening of professional relationship. So, the question now is, how I gonna do this, and why I gonna do this? The question is, why shall I ever do and uh, improve my networking skills? Because networking is number one skill for the future executive. Why? Because, first of all, there are at least two reasons why that's the case. The first reason is because through networking, you can improve or you can find new job opportunities. Let me explain why, how. You have two markets of job opportunities. First is advertised jobs market, and the second one is unadvertised or hidden job markets. In the first, or in advertised job markets, you have only 20% of all job offerings. It means because the most people are looking for the advertised job markets, so some kind of online or offline job boards, for example, monster.com, and the most of the people are looking for these jobs, it is a really high competition is in these um, advertised job markets. Now we turn to the hidden job markets. There you can find 80% of total job offerings. It means because less people are looking for these hidden job offerings and much more job offers are in this market, together it results that it is much easier to get the job over here. And it is much harder to get a job in the advertised job market. The second reason is why networking is so important is that because through networking you can source a lot more business deals. So the question is, of course, why? How are you going to source these deals? You can do it on the active and on the passive basis. 
On the active basis, you know you can do cold calls and warm calls. On the passive basis is advertisement of your services and just recommendation of your direct or indirect contacts to further contacts. In both parts, so in active and passive part, it is, um, it is more, much more efficient to do it via direct and indirect contacts, so via networking to source these deals as to do it like cold calls. So in cold calls, you will much often hear no, 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 as you would do it if you would ask your friends or friends of friends. So that was the first part. The second part. I would like to conclude it all together. Why is networking? What is networking? We found out it is building and straightening of the a professional relationship. Why is networking that important? Because it's your comparative advantage. Only you have this direct and indirect context which you can use for both. You can use this for your career boosting and for sourcing your business deals. Now I will turn to my partner, Martin. Thanks, Anastasia, for your lovely presentation and introduction. What we have learned so far is what networking is and why it is important for you to do actively networking. What I would like to focus right now is on how to become a good networker. And we developed a simple to understand four step process, process that you can actively use in your daily process, which consists of first, uh, that you define what you do you want to achieve namely what is your objective. And the second part is uh, just a derivat derivative of this kind of objective that you pre previously defined. Um, and the third step is that you just go out and make new contacts. After this step, you just concentrate on maintaining and growing this kind of relationships. In the further process of this presentation, I would like to go through every step I just described in, uh, briefly. Let's start with the objective. There are different types of objectives that you could pursue. For example, you could focus on your career development or just sourcing your deals, or maybe you just need a specific type of knowledge that a specific set of people only know. Let's have an example. Maybe you just want to enter the private equity industry, which is a very general objective, and hence very unactively, so you cannot um, action based on this kind of general objective. Hence, you need to be more specific and break, just, uh, break this down to a more specific ob objective. In this case of a private equity deal, you could just assume in five years, I want to be working in a private equity fund in Spain that has uh, at least 100 million asset under management and focuses on technology uh, startups. This is a very good and specific objective that you can use in order to determine what kind of context you need in order to achieve your objective, which is the second step of our networking process called strategy. As I said before, we need to determine what kind of people do we need in our network in order to achieve um, our objective, which is what I call target group. Maybe some of you know it from typically business decisions, what is my target group? And we found out that there are four major criteria that you can use to specify what is your target group that can help you find your objective. Um, you need to ask what type of function should the person be? Should it be working in HR, legal, IT, finance department, etc.? Then you should focus on what kind of seniority this guy should be working? Should it be more a junior position that I'm looking for to network with, or is it more the senior guys that I'm looking to network with? And one of the most important decisions is where should this target group be located? Should it be in a specific type of country, region, or maybe even a city like Madrid? And the last criteria you should be thinking about is in which industry is my target group mainly active? Is it investment banking, private equity, hedge funds, banking, audit, et cetera, et cetera. If you determined all of these parameters, you know uh, um, what is your target group. And at this point of time, you 
need to think about whether your target group is more broad, like it is depicted in the blue, um, yeah, what is it called, uh, area, or if, if it is more uh, narrow, like it is depicted in the orange area. We always recommend that in the beginning of your pursuance of your objective, you focus on a broader target group, and the more time that passes, you focus on a more narrow target group. Let's get to the question you defined, what type of person you need in your network. The next obvious question is, where do I meet this kind of persons? And this step we call making contacts, and we found out that there are basically two ways that you can find contacts. One is you actively look for uh, people, uh, for example, online in business networks like LinkedIn or Zing. Uh, the, uh, the other way would be that you look offline, for example, at conferences like the Financial Congress here, or social networking events that we, for example, host, or other social gatherings. Another way for making contacts would be passive, the passive approach, which includes using your existing contact network. Yeah, as you maybe know, your existing contacts may introduce or recommend other people to you that are valuable to you, um, which means you get to know more people through your existing network. And another way for passive approach would be to increase your public visibility, with, with which you can do in at least two ways. For example, joining a business community and improve your, let's call it, search engine optimization uh, in the sense that you enrich your profile with keywords that other people potentially are looking for. And the second way would be just to write media articles. And hence, people will come to you because you're an expert in your specific industry. Just the results what I was talking right now. Obviously, making new contacts is very important, no doubt about this. But the most important skill we found out for a good networker is to maintain and strengthen the relationships with his peers. And this is our last and fourth step of the networking process. Imagine um, you made some good and new contacts here at the Financial Congress. And the next obvious question would be how to strengthen this kind of relationships. And there are, yeah, I would say two key ingredients that you need to consider if you're doing this. First would be to have a regular interaction with your contacts in several ways. You can do it face-to-face, -face, like typically one-on-one -on -one meetings, or on networking events, or on conferences. Or you can do it on uh, messages, or via messages, or via phone conversation. Most people that we asked uh, always told us, Interaction makes a good networker, but we say interaction alone does not make a good, a good networker at all because it is the values that you deliver to your contacts that make you, for example, credible, trustful, and helpful. Yes. Mm. Just imagine a case. Um, when you have some context, and you want to help him. And the question is, why should you do this? And the reasoning behind this is very simple. If you help a person to achieve his objective, then he will be thankful, and in the next phase, the relationship between you and this person will be strengthened. This, in turn, means the person will be more likely to help you out in achieving your objective, which results in a win-win situation for both of you to reach both of your objectives. And that's why networking is also very helpful in attaining or pursuing um, your objective. I would like to conclude my presentation with just two thoughts. First thought is, we are here at the Financial Congress, which is a great opportunity to make new contacts, which starts in the th third phase of our networking process. So please, uh, I would advise everybody of you to make at least 10 good uh, contacts and follow our process. The second information would be if you have any questions regarding the Finance Club or networking in general, please don't hesitate to contact us. We would very much help you um, out. Um, and I just want to say muchas gracias y uh, nos vamos en la red.
Thank you. Thank you very much, Martin and Anastasia, for your wonderful presentation. It was really helpful <coughs> for those who are, we are uh, starting to, to learn about networking, that it's really important and it's, uh, it's uh, usually not, not uh, very good to uh, use these uh, networking advantages. So we, we have uh, some questions from the, the public. And uh, I, we, was, we could start for that one for in, that's seen on Facebook that uh, you can see there, that is from Karina Scalona, that do you think a person should have two different profiles to do networking, personal and professional, or mix the two of them and be aware of what you post in the social media? Uh, what do you mean by personal and professional profile? Um, because networking is, the, the focus of networking is not the, I would say, uh, private stuff, meeting girls, whatever, but it's a more on a professional basis, which means I, I want to pursue a, a career or sourcing deals. Hence, you should focus on um, developing your professional profile that you can, for example, put um, uh, on business networks or present to potential um, contacts. Okay. I would say, mm -hmm. can you hear me? Okay. Um, I would say it would not really make sense to do two profiles. As you are just one person, you are just one individual, you are just one personality. It doesn't matter whether it's professional or personal basis, it should be the same. So I would say no. Yeah, yeah, perfect, yes. So. Uh, more questions. I mean, uh, it was amazing that you have uh, you have uh, 150,000 different people in your group. So the question is, uh, how you manage to to bring all those people to to our group in LinkedIn? Um, the question is, in the past or in present? Okay, yeah. we, we can. How, how is it possible both, to to both. bring all those people? Yeah. Okay. Um, First of all, if you want to acquire new customers or members, and basically it's the same, you can uh, do th two things. Uh, first, you can go out and, for example, advertise, yeah, so mm. people can join you. There are different ways of doing this. And uh, if you have done this, you focus on um, delivering value to the people that are already members <laughs> so they can spread the word. And this is what we did. First, we acquired some users, mm. and then we focused on, uh, similar like in the mouse networking to process, mouse-to-mouse mouse advertisement, or viral, like uh, some people call it. OK, OK, thank you. So we got more questions. Uh, when, why you explain that uh, these tools, uh, such as LinkedIn or Shing, uh, has been so successful in this professional world? Uh, what do you think are uh, so successful? Do you mean as a platform or for us? As a, as a platform. OK. Um, first of all, these platforms are only successful if there is some perceived need of the people or users mm. to use such kind of servers. OK? Um, and there are two ways one could satisfy this need. Offline, which has been done for several hundred of years, or in the current time, online, which is more, I would say, time efficient because you don't have to travel so much time and uh, chit chat very fast um, which helps you to, to even grow a national or international network of professionals and hence as Sing and LinkedIn both satisfy this need better than or at least as good as the traditional networking they have grown so much okay thank you uh, one more question we have from online and it's uh, now uh, it's uh, it's usually that people are using Facebook, Twitter, and, and, and LinkedIn, but uh, is there any uh, real, real different use of uh, the, these three uh, networking uh, tools? You mean that uh, LinkedIn is mainly used for professional purposes and Facebook for private purposes? I would say that the people most time uh, perceive it like this, yes. Um, nevertheless, at least, me, I was experiencing this thing that some professional contact was uh, approaching me on Facebook. So it means I think in the future it would be it would go together. So although you would you can do it like only private and only disco photos on Facebook, the thing is you are already there. So the people from your job, your colleagues and other, they can search for your name and they can find you. So. 
um, everybody has to be aware of what they put online. Okay. And uh, do you uh, do you see uh, 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 that there are, I mean, uh, different uses for uh, networking tools or for how to make net uh, networking in different countries? I mean, people okay. are uh, use. Uh, mm. uh, I would say um, the main thing that we saw is that it, uh, the kind of communication that people do is different. For example, in Germany, it is more formal if you approach other contexts or mm. people that you don't know. And for example, if you're looking at the UK or the US, it's very, I would say, non-formal, informal if you approach with people. And they are easier to approach, but I would say harder to um, maintain or mm. strengthen in the terms of the relation. Or do you mean this question just up there? Do you think that the traditional networking is moving to the network? So do you think, okay. Mm. Um, I would say no. I would never say that the traditional can um, somehow just exchange the, uh, or the internet network can exchange the traditional network. The people can get to know each, uh, each together by a network, uh, by an internet network, but nevertheless, at some point, at some serious point, they have to get together on the same table and they have to talk to each other. Because there are so many things like um, you, can, you have to see each other in eyes, you have to see how the person reacts to your, to your question and further. Okay, and uh, what about, do you have this uh, other question? The online profile should be the mirror of your offline profile? Mm. I, would, I would say, if your offline profile is your CV, okay, then I would say your online profile should be similar, because as Anastasia sh uh, showed, um, there should be no discrepancies between your offline and mm. online profile, as this means some kind of yeah, not credibility, and as I said before, credibility and trustfulness is very, very important, which means show them one kind of picture of yourself, and that's it. So, um, it's, it's, it is a mirror. Online is the mirror of the offline yeah, profile. But also take care what you put online, so everybody has maybe not the best sites. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Todavía tenemos tiempo para alguna pregunta. Se pueden hacer también en, en castellano, en Twitter o Facebook. Uh, do you, uh, what do you think about uh, Xing? I mean, is it is worth to to spend time on Xing, or just we should just use LinkedIn? Okay, you are asking whether we should either focus on Xing or LinkedIn, and I would say it depends on where your target group is. As I said before, if your target group is more um, in a German area, for example, then you should use obviously Sing because there the ratio of German-speaking people to internationals is much higher than in LinkedIn. And if you're focusing more on the international level, which means Anglo-Saxonian countries like UK, US or India, then you should focus on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Okay. We so it, it's basically, uh, you only have to ask every time you think about it, where are the users uh, coming from and what type uh, are they on a specific platform compared to each other? And then ask yourself, where is my target group and where can I reach them most time efficiently? Mm -hmm. Thank you. We have one more question there on, on Facebook. In which social networks can I help in this current crisis? <laughs> um, I the thing is, what current crisis? Uh, that in terms of a financial crisis or uh, the uh, Spanish job crisis? Or, or I'm not sure uh, whether social networks can help, but on a, uh, on a general level, but on an individual level, it can help people um, to be in business networks. And we have to distinguish between LinkedIn and uh, Sing, and on the other hand, Facebook, yeah, because of the purposes that each of these different types of platforms play. If you are using this kind of business networks, it can help you uh, to, as, an, um, as Anastasia said, to find a job and source more deals, which obviously in times of crisis is the key for you, for example, to maintain your job if you source more deals. Okay, so it's just uh, 6.30 p.m., so thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for inviting. Thank you, thank you. too.